Hey, this is Mr. Aiden, and this is AP Calculus uh, Unit 5, Analytical Applications of Differentiation. We're going to be going through all those sample AP problems. So what you want to do is you want to do all those sample AP problems on the Unit 5 review, and then check with this um, check with this video, and I'll go through each and every problem for you to make sure you got the right answers. So uh, let's start with number five. Number five, we have a function here, and we want to know uh, where the function is going to be decreasing, which means we're going to do the first derivative test. And so the first derivative of this function is going to be x squared my, uh, plus 3x minus 70 which means now I'm going to be able to do some factoring with that one. We have x, we have x, and what are the factors of negative 70 is positive 10 and negative 7. And so just like with my first derivative test, I want to take a look at uh, negative 10 and positive 7, and I want to plug these some values, so I'm going to plug in values uh, lower than negative 10 in here, and I end up getting, I'm going to get positive values. If I plug in 0 in here, I am going to end up getting a negative value. And if I plug in numbers bigger than 7, I'm going to get another positive value. So you can see how we want to know where is the function decreasing. It's decreasing only from this value of 10 to negative 10 to 7, which is answer D. Uh, let's go to the next problem. That's problem number 8 on this exam. And we have a graph of velocity time. And we want to know where is the speed going to be decreasing. Well, if you can see, the speed goes from zero velocity up to a maximum velocity, and then back down to zero, which means we are going to be decreasing my speed during this interval from j to k. Then my speed, remember speed is a scalar quantity in terms of physics, it's going to be increasing in the negative direction, and then it gets to a negative velocity. Negative just means not slow, but negative means it is going in the negative direction, and then it goes back down to zero, which means we are our speed, our scalar speed is decreasing from L to M, which is answer C. Let's take a look. Uh, I grouped these three problems together. I'm going to go through all three of them somewhat together. And uh, so hold on tight here. Number 13, we have f of 0 is equal to negative 5. f prime of x is going to be less than or equal to 3. And I want to know which is not a possible value of f of 2, which means I'm going to use this mean value theorem. I'm either going to pick this negative value or this positive value for e. I just picked this value right here. And so if, as you can see, if f of 2 is equal to 2, as this answer would be, and I know f of 0 is equal to negative 5, I'm going to find the slope of this line. So I'm going to do 2 minus negative 5 over 2 minus 0, and I end up getting 7 over 2, which is 3.5. Now, I know that it has, has to be less than or equal to negative 3, which means it cannot be e, which is 2. Uh, so I picked the right one right off the bat. Uh, the next one I'm looking for the absolute minimum, okay, which means I want to take the first derivative test. So g, g prime of x equals 12x squared plus 6x minus 6. And so uh, when I take a look at that derivative, I'm going to now factor out a 6. And so when I factor out a 6, I end up getting 2x squared plus x minus 1. And I can end up factoring this guy a little bit more. I end up getting minus 1 plus 1, which means I have possibly some values here. I have some possibly some values here. You can see how uh, if I take a look at my values, I have the n value. Remember, I'm looking for the absolute minimum, so I could be negative 2. I could be uh, negative 1, I could be 1 half, and I could be the endpoint of 1. And so I'm going to plug these values back into my little uh, equation right here. And I know if I plug in a value of negative uh, 1.5, 
I'm going to get a positive value. Now if I plug in a value of zero, I'm still going to get a positive value. You can see it's keep it's going up, 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 which means I know that the absolute minimum value has to be at this x is equal to negative 2. So when I plug that back in, x is equal to negative 2 into this function, I end up getting a y value of negative 7, which is a. And that's my absolute minimum value. Uh, this last little problem right here, number 28, is a trig problem. And we're going to end up taking the first derivative of this. So we take the first derivative of this sine of x, which is cosine of x, and cosine of x, which is negative sine of x. And then I take the second derivative, which is the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x minus the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, which means uh, when can I set this equal to zero? That's when your sine of x is equal to your cosine of x. When is your sine of x equal to cosine of x? That's at 45 degrees. That's at pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 and so on and so forth, 5 pi over 4 and so on and so forth. And so as I plug these values in, if we look at from 0 to pi over 4, that's obviously going to be a, um, a negative value. When I plug it back in, if I plug in a value like 90 degrees between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, uh, that ends up being a negative value. If I plug in anything after that to my function, that ends up being a positive value. So you can see how I'm going from concave down to concave up at 3 pi over 4. A little difficult one. Let's take a look at 82. Uh, remember, any of these larger problems in terms of numbers, well, you can use a calculator. So 82, you can use your calculator, which means we're looking for wh when do we have a relative maximum. The easiest way to do this is graph this function. Graph this function, change the interval, which means you go in the menu, you go to Windows Zoom, and you change the intervals from negative 2.5 to positive 2.5, and you will find out the answer is 0.542. That's when x is equal to 0, and that's when it's going from positive to negative, which tells you a relative maximum. Let's take a look at 86. 86, we're looking for where is the derivative. Where is the derivative greater than 0, which means that first derivative, that means it's an increasing function. And we know the second derivative is less than 0, which means that's going to be a concave down function. And you can see, hopefully, e. e looks like this. We got a negative 1, it's 4, then it's 6, then it's 7. It's going to be increasing, but it's going to be concave down as we investigate all those. 87, we can still use our calculator, which means uh, the best thing to do with this function is graph that nasty guy. Uh, take your interval, change your window to that interval, and you can see it crosses the x-axis six times on that graph. Okay. Uh, number 88 right here, uh, we have an f of x, and we, which means we want to know the differentiability of this, which means we're going to know we're going to want to know the tangent line. So the slope of this tangent line is 0. The slope at 0 is a positive value. The slope at 1 is a negative value, which means that gives us our answer, which is d. f prime of 1 is less than f prime of negative 1, which is less than f prime of 0. And last one on this exam, I believe, is number 92. And it says, where do we not attain a maximum value? That means it cannot be continuous, cannot be continuous. That's something you want to know. Let's go to the uh, the other exam we took a look at, some of our sample problems. Number nine, we're looking for uh, which one, given this first derivative, they gave us this first derivative, which means we know we have uh, critical numbers at negative one, we have a critical number at zero, and we have a critical number at three. And so we're going to plug in some values, uh, some values into this first derivative. And if we plug in values at a less than negative one, we end up getting positive values. If we plug in between negative one and zero, we get a negative value. 
and then between 0 and 3 we get a positive, and then past that we still get positives. And we want to know where is there a relative maximum, which means we're going from positive to negative, which means that is going to be at negative 1 only. If we take a look at number 15, and guys, I know I'm going through this rather quickly, but you can stop me at any point in time. Negative 15, we have a function. We know the g is differentiable. It's increasing for all intervals, which means we want to take the derivative of this inside function right here, which is 3x squared minus 12x, which we can take out a 3x and we get x minus 4, which means we have critical numbers at 0 and 4. And so you can see if we plug in numbers less than 0, that's negative numbers, we end up getting a positive value. If we plug in numbers between uh, one, 0 and 4, we end up getting a negative value, and any numbers bigger, we're going to get positive, which means we're looking for where are we going to be increasing. We're going to be increasing from negative infinity all the way to 0, and from 4 all the way to infinity, which is A. Uh, here we're taking a look at our graph for points of inflection. What are we doing with points of inflection? We're taking the second derivative, and so the first derivative is equal to 15x to the fourth, plus 40x to the third. The second derivative is 60x to the third plus 120x squared. We're going to factor out a 60x squared, which means we're left with x plus 2, which means we have our, crit our critical numbers, which could be uh, at negative 2 or 0, which could give us a point of inflection. Now, point of inflection, we're looking for where does the concavity change? You can see below 2, it's going to be concave down. Between negative 2 and 0, it's going to be concave up. And from 0 and above, it's going to be concave up, which means we only change concavity at point of inflection at negative 2. Let's take a look at 22. 22, uh, we're going to take a look at where is the graph both decreasing and concave up, which means I want to take the first derivative. The first derivative is 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. The, if I factor out a 6, I get x squared minus x minus 2, which is 6 times x, and we're going to be minus 2, positive 1. We're going to take a look at our second derivative of this. And I'll do this in a different color. The second derivative of my x value ends up being 12x minus 6, which equals 6, 2x minus 1. And so you can see how here I have critical numbers at negative 1 and 2. And if I plug in some values, I end up getting negative, it's decreasing. Negative, it's decreasing. Positive, it's increasing. As we take a look at the second derivative, I have one what we call point of inflection, a possible point of inflection at 1 half. And if we plug in our numbers, we get positive and we get positive, which means it's concave up the entire time. So the only time where we're decreasing is from negative 1 to 2. And the only place that we're decreasing is from 1 half on up. And so we know our answer is D only from one half, the interval from one half to two. 78, we're going to calculator problems now because we are above uh, that 76. And so as we take a look, we're taking a look at something where there's only one point of inflection, but it has to be increasing for all numbers. You can see there is only one point of inflection for B, but there's going to be some increasing and decreasing, which means our answer is A. There's one point of inflection, a non-differentiability, but all the values are positive. Okay, You can see E has all values positive, but there is two possible points of inflection for that one. Let's go to 80. 80, we're hitting a table out here. And again, we're back to the mean value theorem. We want to know what's the slope, what could be the slope, at 3, well, it's going to be really close to the slope between 1 and 5, which means 5.4 minus 2.4, that's equal to 3, over 5 minus 1, that's 4, or 0.75, it's going to be very, very, very close, a little bit less, which means my answer is 
B for number 80. Uh, and that is, that was all of our sample AP problems for Unit 5, Analytical Applications of Differentiation. You're going to get a lot of, uh, a lot of look at this Unit 5. It's one of the more comprehensive units of our AP calculus. So, hope this helped, and uh, let me know how you did. Thanks.